Hey, my name is Mike Acosta from ADSR Sounds, and in this video, this is a really special one. We're here in our brand new Denver office location. We just finished installing all these really cool RLX panels and everything. Specifically, just for our special guest today, we have our friends from Novation that are here in the house with us today. We have Enrique, uh, product specialist for Novation, and we've got a brand new product that we would love to show you. We're gonna take a first look and overview. So Enrique, what, what do we got? Cool, man. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, so this is our brand new uh, SL Mark III, the 61 version right here. And basically what this is, is a hardware software sequencer. And basically it can tie your hardware side of your studio working seamlessly with your DAW with a bunch of Ableton control, a bunch of, you know, customizable templates and stuff that you have. Like, for example, on the screen, we got like the Ocos, the Mini Nova or the Nova. You got things for like OP6, a bunch of pre-made mappings, but you can easily map and make a bunch of these things to fit your need, whether you're in Ableton or Logic or Pro Tools, whatever you need this thing to do, it can do it, which is great. Obviously, there's a lot going on. Uh, it's definitely not like you're just a regular another USB controller. There's some serious stuff happening. It looks beautiful. So rather than keep asking questions, I'm sure everybody wants to see the integration with Ableton and, yeah. and what it can do. So let's jump right into it. This is the new 61 SL MK3. So to kick things off, um, the biggest addition to the SL line now is our new 8-track sequencer. If you're familiar with Circuit, we've kind of taken that, beefed it up a bit, and multiplied it by 4, basically, because on Circuit you have 2, here you have 8. And this also includes all your sessions, which is basically like your songs. You have templates, which are completely customizable as well, which are really cool. You can have up to 64 on here. You got 2 MIDI outputs, 2 CV gate mod outputs, 3 pedal inputs, USB port, a bunch of different functionality and control for the hardware side of your studio but the cool thing here is this works seamlessly with your DAW and DAW integration so I can easily jump over to for example in control mode here and here I can take full control of devices that I have in Ableton so if we go and look at Ableton side of things here and we kind of reference it to our five LED color screens here, I can easily change the position of my wavetable, the filter frequency, the resonance with using these eight endless encoders. But check this out. If I page down, I don't have just control to eight parameters. I have control to every parameter of the device within Ableton, but right here without even having to touch the laptop. On top of that, you have things like your pans, your sends, your volume faders for everything. You even have these buttons here with mutes, solos, record arms, and one of my favorite functions, which is the monitoring. You can actually change whether it's off, in, or auto, right here on the device without even having to touch the laptop again. You got your transport controls, you have capture, one of the new Live 10 features that you have access to right here on the SL as well. The grid mode, using these 16 grid buttons here, basically they're velocity sensitive, they got uh, polyphonic aftertouch, they're a little larger, they're way more sensitive, we've definitely improved on the feel and the touch of them, but you can use these to kind of get some dynamics out of your playing, whether you're using your drum rack. So for example, if I were to hit grid mode, you can go ahead and see and play all your sounds from your drum rack right on here, and the pads actually light up to correspond with what sounds you have in your drum rack within Ableton. Getting out of grid mode kind of jumps back to your usual typical thing, which you would expect with scene launches, record arming different clips and recording them into your session view of Ableton and a bunch of different features and functions and everything. And this is just the DAW side of things, the Ableton side of things. This also works with like Logic and Pro Tools. You can easily map a lot of these things. There's Huey support as well. So if you're not using Ableton, don't worry. This is a great controller for any DAW out there. Jumping back to the hardware side of things, going here to our sequencer the cool thing here is if I were to press play you can see our sequencer starts running there's a bunch of different ways to integrate your DAW side of things with your hardware side of things the 8-track sequencer is basically made up of eight different patterns per part and each part or each pattern I should say is 16 steps but you're not just limited to a 16 step pattern or a one bar pattern you can actually sequentially tie your patterns together effectively creating way longer patterns than just four bars you can do four you could do eight you could just do two of the last two and not to mention 
within all of these, if you go and check out your patterns and hit the options button, you have a bunch of different play styles for that pattern. And you can do forward, backward, ping pong. You can change the sync rate, the start point, the end point, um, even adjust the dynamics of how you played into the sequencer. Touching on some of the hardware side of things, you even have a dedicated uh, CV gate mod output, two of them. But the cool thing here is you have an analog clock output and you can actually change the rate of which the PPQN or the parts per quarter note is sending out. So depending on whether you have an old Roland box or uh, ARP 2600, you can actually change ways that the clock is going to be divided or sent out to effectively sync everything together. The cool thing here, again, if I hit stop on this, and go back to in control mode. If I were to press play in Ableton or press play here, it'll start Ableton's playback, but also start the hardware side of things and have that move with everything. So this is a great way to kind of be the centerpiece for everything and tie everything together in one seamless fashion. Looking again at the hardware side of things, you got some more features on here. For example, scales mode, you have an arpeggiator, and you even have zones. Looking at scales, you can see the key bed here. I'll flip it over to channel two, so it's yellow, right? If I go to scales mode and I hit shift and scale, I'll turn on the scale. And bam, right away you can see that the LEDs change corresponding to what scale I'm in. In this case, I'm in a C natural minor. If I were to change the scale, you can see that the LEDs are changing as I move the knob. The cool thing here, is I can actually turn on and off scale mode per track. So if I have a drum machine or for this case, drum rack in Ableton on track one, I can just hit that and turn that off. That way I have access to all the drum sounds within the drum rack without changing the way they sound. You have a couple ways to play with the scale mode as well. There's snap mode, which will basically take your wrong note and move it onto the correct note and then, or the note that's within the scale. You have filter, which is again, if you were to hit that wrong note, it'll just cancel it out. It won't let it trigger or engage. And then there's display only, which is a great teaching tool because basically what you're doing here is you're looking at the keyboard and the LEDs show you what notes are actually in that scale, but it actually allows you to kind of get a little jazzy with it and kind of hit some wrong notes and kind of take it off the rails a little bit. So you're not just tied strictly to that scale. Now jumping over to arpeggiator side of things, if I hit shift and arp, I'll turn the arpeggiator on. Right now I'm on track five, which is the O coast, running out of the CV and gate mod output number two. So check this out, press a chord, you'll instantly hear it start going out. The cool thing here, I can hit arp and actually have a bunch of different parameters to what type of arp this is. Cool thing, down here in the 16 pads, I can actually take notes on and off of the arpeggiator, creating my own arpeggiated sequence. So if I have this, you'll hear every 16 step played. But I can go and take a couple things out, creating a new arpeggiated pattern within this arp. Again here, we got different controls, for example, what type of arpeggiator it is. Right now we're set to up, I can set it to down, up, down, even have a random, which is just gonna take the notes that I played and kind of just ping pong between them randomly. You even have things like your gate, depending on how long the note is held per each arpeggiated, if you wanna get really plucky, your sync rates, what octaves, how many octaves it's gonna hit as a whole, depending on what note you played, as well as your velocity. And then to tie all that up, you also have the length of the arpeggiator too. So within that art where you designed and took a couple notes out, you can actually shorten that or lengthen it as well. Now on to one of my favorite features, which is zones. We've now brought the zones to the SL Mark III, which is really cool. So check this out. I'm gonna hit zones, turn that on, and you can see the different colors that show up on the LEDs, right? This is signifying different zones of the keyboard dedicated to different parts of my setup. Whether this is hardware or software, this can fully be applied to both. So if we go into zones, we can actually see what each zone is doing. We have up to eight zones, meaning we can split this keyboard into eight different sections. So for example, zone one is right here. If I wanted this to be the O coast, I can easily say, what's the destination? I want it to be destination five or track five, which is the O coast. If I go to zone two, this is gonna be the Nova laptop. I can change where it starts and ends. So in this case, I'm gonna set it all the way up and only have a couple base notes down here off of the O coast. Destination, let's go to six, which is the Nova laptop. You can even change whether the octave follows, it's transposition to everything, and you can even layer zones up. 
So going to zone three, turn that off, zone four, off, zone five, off. So now we only have two zones. Going back to steps, you can see this, which is our Ocos, right? And then we have the, lap, the Nova. So check this out. Now that I've had these two zones activated, I can hit record and press play and actually record both of these parts simultaneously, but they'll be recorded into their respective track sequencers. So the Ocos will go into track five and the Nova laptop will go into track six. So check this. Say. So that's now recorded and now I can go ahead and play this. Easy, right? So this kind of brings us on to the next part of this is you can see up here I have Ocoast as well as the Nova laptop. I've gone ahead and made a simple template within the template editor in components and I can take control of the Nova laptop from right here. So while it plays, I can easily change the cutoff or the resonance. Check this. Maybe I want some reverb. Some delay. And it doesn't just stop there. You can actually record the automation of you turning the knobs or lifting up the faders or pressing down on the buttons. So watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and record some automation of me moving the filter cutoff. Press record. And bam, right there you can see that it turned red as soon as I was recording. And now you can see with its feedback on the screen of exactly what I just did. And I can start doing this for a bunch of things, up to eight things at once, which is crazy. The editor for this as well is super simple. You can easily go and jump through a bunch of the templates that Novation has already made. Uh, it has a bunch of like, you know, vintage synths and common synths now. You're gonna have up to 64, but we got like Sub 37, OB6, even things like the Big Sky or the Timeline. If you're a Strymon or effects pedal person, you can easily take control of your effects, your synthesizers, all from one spot.